Welcome back everybody. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. Today we're gonna to be going over the tampering period. Comment down below. Tell me what you think of the first-ish day of free agency. So today is the day that you can basically agree on terms, but you can't actually sign anything. So I don't know, I guess it's the two haters that are still trying to like grasp on to like, dude, it's not gonna be the starter, I, I don't know. But we got a guy that you're probably not gonna see on the field. I know people are gonna say this and that, but for the most part, I just think this coming year, you, you, I don't care about Mike White. I, I, he's cool to be a backup. It's great. We needed a backup quarterback. That's that's all that I care about. We needed somebody that if something happens, whatever. But I don't believe that Tua is going to go down. I hope not. And honestly, we don't really want to see this guy on the field. If we do, then that means something is wrong. So essentially, the biggest signing that we had today was David Long Jr., which... I'm telling you right now, I, I just honestly, everybody... I think people these days, they just, all they focus on are like the big, big names and they don't really focus on anything else. And what I could say with David Long is you got your young linebacker right now for very, very cheap. He's been, you know, injured this last year and the year before that. But you have a guy that can play pass coverage. You have a guy that can play run stuffing. And you have a guy that has really good hands. So the last two seasons, each of the seasons of the last two seasons, he's had two interceptions. If you look at his statistic, every single year his tackles have gone up. And basically every single t statistic uh, has gone up. He's gotten two interceptions every single year. The guy can shed blocks. The only real thing is that he had uh, kind of like softer injuries to kind of keep him off the field a couple of the games, which sucks. But you're getting this guy for two years, $11 million. So basically $5 million a year. That is a steal for somebody that can probably hop in and become a pro bowler under the Vic Fangio system. Because the guy has all the tools to be an elite linebacker. You're getting somebody that's 26. So you're getting a young guy. You know, like I said in my last video, I, I like Bobby Wagner. I like Levante David. But they're also older. So... You know, there is the inevitable loss of a step. They were in a very good system, both of them. They're both amazing linebackers, but they are both aging. And the thing is, is even with Ray Lewis, once he hit the older part of the end of his career, he wasn't really the same player. So I would rather get a guy that not only, you know, we have the Super Bowl window that we're trying to hit. You have a guy that can come in and not just be here for two years, but possibly getting the next guy that can keep your franchise going. I, I don't think that Greer is, I mean, I think he's focused on getting what he needs to get this year, which we'll see. We might even sign a Bobby Wagner, Levante David, or whatever it is, and, you know, call it a day. But I'm telling you, this is kind of what I was going with with the Devin Bush thing, is that I want that young guy that has the upside that can be a Levante David or a Bobby Wagner, given the right system and given the right tool traits from the coaching staff, and make him into something like that. And then you get somebody for very, very cheaper dollar uh, residuals than what you would have to spend to go get one of those guys. You know, like a Jordan Poyer too. I like Jordan Poyer. I don't know if he's coming to us, but again, another guy that's going to cost a lot of money. And I think for me, honestly, the next guy that I would want to get, I wanted Jawan Taylor, but I didn't want to spend $80 million on him. I think Caleb McGarry, or McGrary, or whatever, uh, from the Atlanta Falcons. I think that guy's another solid right tackle. I would like to see them maybe go for another right tackle. Here's my consensus, is that you want to get really good players with a lot of upside because what we have to also wrap our minds around is that the Dolphins have spent a lot of money on coaching staff as well in order to turn these players into developmental superstars. So. You know, we could be sitting here thinking like we want all these names and all this stuff, but again, Jerome Baker, even though he hasn't been the linebacker that we really, really wanted, he still has 
improved every single season. Now, like I said, we could sign a linebacker. You know, I, I don't know. Maybe we'll sign another one. We could. But, oh, and on top of that, we, we signed back Duke Riley. Uh, we could be in the mindset for the Dolphins where the coaching staff thinks they can mold some of these players. Again, safety, we want to get a Jordan Poyer, but we also do have Verone McKinley and a Brandon Jones, which I know that their skill set sometimes wasn't for that type of system, but we don't know what these players are capable of. I think on the hand of they were put in a system that might have been set up for them for, for the defensive line to succeed and the back end to fail unless you were an all-pro, all-world talent. And the thing is, is that, you know, with some of these players in the back end, I think when you're blitzing almost every single player and you're putting these guys in a position where they have to stand 10 yards back and then come and rush to get whoever is trying to catch the ball, I think you're putting them in the wrong position. Whereas now, you have a coach that is going to design it so that you are disguising your plays, not necessarily just maybe trying to disguise who you're blitzing. It's going to be a different defense, and that's what people have to understand. And what we could possibly be getting into is that we're trying to work with Brandon Jones and Verone McKinley. We don't think we need another person right there. We think that maybe we get a right tackle or we get an offensive lineman or we draft somebody instead of spending all this money on big, big name free agents because we did get one. <laughs> We got Jalen Ramsey, who is one of the best players in the league and has been for a very long time. You know, even though he's had a down year, he's on a Rams team last year that wasn't doing anything. So, so that kind of messes with your morale and your ability to want to give everything. So I think we have to take a step back and look at that. We, we have signed a couple of potential players with Jalen Ramsey, and not really a potential, but with David Long, you have a guy that has the potential to be great, and you have a coach that can mold him there. You have Brandon Jones that, you know, for a third-round pick, he has been a stud. He's been a difference maker when it comes to blitzing, and maybe they're trying to mold something to work with that. You know, uh, who else? Jerome Baker. You could possibly get him to the point where he needs to be to be on the field and to be a contributor in this offense or defense. I just think, again, we'll see where we go. I think we still have a shot at landing some of these bigger players. I, I don't think they're going to try and spend a whole bunch of money to secure uh, players that want, like, you know, $20 million contracts that are only going to last, like, a season or so because the future is... I, I, for me, in my mindset, I just think that what you're, what you're getting at with something like that is you're getting the Rams team where... Even if you win the Super Bowl, which is fantastic. That is a fantastic thing. I, and I really want to win the Super Bowl. That would be amazing. But that's not always necessarily guaranteed. And what you're seeing right now is that a flip of a switch and you're in rebuild mode all of a sudden. And that kind of sucks. You know, that sucks as a Rams. If you're a Rams fan, you know, you want your team to keep succeeding. You know, you want your team to be a Kansas City Chiefs that continues to succeed, or a Patriots, or a 49ers, or a Dallas Cowboys back in the 1990s. You know, you want your team to keep succeeding. You don't want to be the person that did it, but now is like, you know, not really at that point, even their coach is gone. You know, you, you don't want to be that. And I think some of the fans, they, they want us to be that, which kind of sucks. I don't want that. I think what we're trying to do what Chris Greer is trying to do is that he is trying to get the players that he needs to get that can give us a long-term future and that can give us that we're going to be in contention for a very long time. That's why you keep to it. That's why you side David Long instead of you know a Bobby Wagner because you're only going to get one or two years out of Bobby Wagner instead of David Long after his two years. If he shows that he's a successful linebacker, we can then extend him and have a linebacker for you know five more years. You know, players like uh, even Jalen Ramsey, he's 28, you know, he, he's, he's going to be here for four-ish years still. You know, it's like you have that longevity with some of these players. Even Tyreek Hill, 26, or 27 I think he is, sorry, somewhere along the line. Jalen Waddle, you know, you have these players that can be here for years, not just trying to get everybody right now that is, you know, talented, but then once they're all at the point afterwards, 
everything's gone. I don't want that. Mm -hmm. So I think they've made a couple moves. We'll see if they make any more moves later on tonight. But I, I think it was a successful day. I think David Long is a successful pickup. We have a middle linebacker now, and we'll see what we do tomorrow. But as always, hope you have a great rest of your day. Like and subscribe, as I always say. Comment down below. But hope you have a great rest of your day. Thins up. Peace.